I greet you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm so honored tonight to be here to come and spend some time with you dear friends to come and fellowship and witness for Jesus Christ and I pray that our fellowship here will mean something that it will bring us closer to Jesus that it will increase our understanding and bring us into a closer relationship with him I see some uh, familiar uh, I would not say faces I see familiar names on here and I welcome you in the wonderful name of Jesus dear friends it is such a privilege to know Jesus Christ and to witness for him and you know we know Jesus through our relationship with him tonight I want to talk about something that there is much misunderstanding about and uh, that is about about spiritual warfare hallelujah I'm just glancing at the uh, at the, uh, the comments down there I'm first going to talk somewhat let me just put my glasses on that I can see good evening brother Mark wonderful to see you here also and uh, good to know that the the video is good on your side hallelujah hallelujah it's so wonderful dear friends it's such a privilege to be able to share Jesus Christ um, I first want to share what the Lord has laid on my heart for tonight, and then uh, uh, then we will uh, we will discuss some things, and I will reply to some questions. We can have some interaction. Mm. Hallelujah, dear friends. I want to talk tonight about spiritual warfare. Uh, it is a phrase. It is something that people talk about a lot and they quote Bible verses about it a lot but there is much misunderstanding also people do not understand that God is spirit and we are spirit and our warfare, our struggle is against the spiritual forces, principalities that rule this earth the battle that we are up against is within ourselves. We have to constantly choose to follow Jesus Christ. And the evil forces, Satan, is constantly trying to derail us, to take our focus off Jesus Christ. Because in ourselves, we can do nothing. Now the whole world is in the power of darkness because Satan has invaded most people. Even little children are demon possessed. They are controlled by Satan. You know people talk about their little ones and they say they are little angels. Dear friends, I was a little demon. I was a little devil. Uh, I did some awful things since I was a little little person. You know, we we can think up the meanest things. We are selfish, we are wicked. It is just in man to do wrong. And unless we are renewed, unless we are born again of the Spirit of God, and we submit ourselves to the Spirit of God, we are controlled by Satan. Let me say that again. If we look after ourselves, then we are selfish. We only concern about ourselves, about our own pleasure, about what we can get out of life. We are born selfish. And if we allow the evil one to control us, to find entry into us, then he starts controlling us and we do evil things. We are born into that disposition that we are sons of the devil. And that is why Jesus said that we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of God. 
The moment that you accept Jesus into your life and you take sides with Jesus Christ, you enter into terrible spiritual warfare because it is the Spirit of God who is working in you to do the will of God. It is your own spirit that you want to satisfy your own needs, your own lusts, your own wants, and then that is the evil spirits of Satan that are distracting you. So we are in the middle of this battle and dear friends we have to constantly submit ourselves to Jesus Christ and submit ourselves to his leadership if we want to win this battle. On our own we cannot do it. We cannot overcome evil on our own, even with the best will in the world. We need to submit ourselves to Jesus Christ. And not only that, we have to go after Him. You know, many people ask me and they say, uh, does it get easier to follow Jesus when you get older? No, it doesn't. We are attacked from all sides, dear friends. Satan is attacking us. We are being bombarded from all sides to take our focus and our attention off Jesus Christ. We are being lied to. The, this world is in the power of the evil one because of lies. They say there is no God. That is a lie. That is a lie from Satan because they deny God. We all know there is a God. If we look around us and we see His handiwork, then we know God is alive. If we listen inside of ourselves, the Spirit of God speaks since we were little. If we deny God, we are in denial. Satan lies to people and they choose to follow the lies, to obey the lies. They choose to, to do what is pleasing to them. They do not want to submit to Jesus Christ and therefore they like to do what is pleasurable to them. They like to do what is evil. You know there's a popular teaching in churches today that they say we are all sinners. That's a lie from Satan. We are not all sinners. I'm not a sinner anymore. I used to be. It didn't bother me to sin when I was in sin, when I was away from Jesus. But since Jesus called me back, since he opened my eyes to the truth, I feel it. Since he dealt with me harshly and I realized that I was on my way to hell, since I started understanding that I've got to take Jesus Christ seriously, I've been in a battle constantly. Satan is doing his best to draw us away and he uses everything that he possibly can to do that. He will use your best friends, he will use your family, he will, he will use those closest to you. That's what he did with, tried to do with Jesus. You know, when Jesus told them that he was about to go, uh, go away, that he would suffer, uh, Peter rebuked him. He said, Lord, may it never be. Well, what did Jesus say to him? He said, get behind me, Satan. Dear friends, we can only afford, we cannot afford to put anything or anybody above Jesus Christ. Our struggle is to keep Jesus on the throne of our heart and that struggle is an internal struggle. You will not obey Jesus, you will not follow him unless you have made out that fight in your mind, in your heart on your knees with Jesus. 
You know, when Jesus tells you to do something, you have to decide, will I obey or will I not obey? And you are in a struggle of obedience until you obey. If you choose wrongly, then you go away from Jesus. If you choose right, you stay in the will of Jesus. That is our struggle. You know, we have to choose all the time. We have to choose, do I go with my wife, with my, my friends, with my family, or do I go with Jesus? We have to choose, friends, and we have to keep on choosing right until the very end. None of us have completed this race yet. You know, the moment that you accept Jesus Christ, your struggle starts. Your spiritual warfare starts. Because then Satan attacks you. Suddenly you realize that you've been doing things all your life that are not in the will of God. You evaluate your, your life, your ambitions, and you say to yourself, why am I doing this? Why do I want the new car? Why do I want the big job? Why do I want to go to university? Why do I want to marry a certain person? Why do I watch TV? It's about me, friends. Maybe I want that car because I want to show that uh, maybe it's pride. We all know what our, our motives are. Uh, some people cannot uh, stop buying, spending money that they don't have. They, uh, they keep on buying. They get themselves into debt and, and, and it kills them. And it goes from the one thing to the other. You know, once you owe money, then you become the slave of somebody else. You've got to work to pay off your debt. And people escalate their debt. And then they get into anxiety. And they refuse to, uh, to acknowledge their fault and, and, and the, or their sin. And uh, they call it a sickness. And then they've got to go to a doctor or a psychologist or somebody who will listen to them and who will, uh, uh, who will show them some, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that will appreciate their problem or, or say, oh no, my friend, you know, uh, we understand your problem and, and, and it is a sickness or we are all sinners. You know, that is why people go to, to certain churches, a church of their choice. They say that pastor preaches such nice words, you know. Oh, you know, he just says, Jesus loves you. But the truth is, Jesus loves you and he is a jealous God. He does not share you with anybody else. He hates divorce. He hates sin. Uh, he hates it when people are lazy, when they don't work. He hates it when people quit. A lot of people say they are going to give up their studies because now they want to follow Jesus full time. They're quitting. Jesus never called us to quit. He called us to follow him. A lot of people want to divorce their wife because they say, no, we don't love each other. We're incompatible. That's a lie from Satan. You just don't have the endurance to go through with what you started. And you started it yourself. They don't keep their vows. And you know, we know how to get ourselves into trouble, dear friends. We know very well how to do that. I can speak first hand from experience. But there's a wonderful thing, and that is that if we submit to Jesus, then He will guide us out. He will set us free. We can get ourselves into bondage so easily you know we, we can get addicted to things you just open the devil the door to the devil just slightly and he slips in if you don't take the first smoke you will not smoke if you don't drink the first beer you will not you will not drink liquor 
if you don't watch television and if you don't watch porn, the first bit of porn, then you will not get hooked on it. If you don't take that first drug, then you won't get hooked on it. But that is how it happens. We open the door to Satan and we listen to other people. You know, this whole world is deceived by the devil because they believe lies. And we are all deceived. Uh, I find myself in many ways that, that the Lord opens my eyes to certain things that I did not understand. You know, people say going to the sports game is harmless. Is it harmless? Watching TV is harmless. It's a waste of time. It distracts your attention from Jesus Christ. You can go and sit in front of that television and before you know it, it's many, many hours later and you're still sitting there. You've been unproductive. You've filled your head with a lot of trash. You've listened to propaganda of Satan. You've been brainwashed. You have absorbed all the filth that is presented to you. Your mind is dirty. Your spirit is dirty. You have absolutely surrendered yourself to Satan. And now people want to know why they are anxious, why they are in fear. They listen to the wrong people. Dear friends, we will be in bondage if we allow ourselves to be manipulated by Satan. We will be in bondage, we will be lost if we follow our own mind and our own insight. Many people I think that they can educate themselves into some superior position, into freedom. Many people think that they can find salvation through studying the Bible. Listen, the Bible is a wonderful book and the revelations that were written there were written by people who received them from God. But dear friend, if you do not have the glasses of the Holy Spirit on. If the Spirit of God does not open it to you, it remains a closed book. If you do not have the Spirit of Christ in you, you remain blind, you remain in darkness. But when you accept Jesus, when you walk with Jesus, when you put your mind on Jesus all the time, then he gives us understanding. Then suddenly everything makes the light goes on. We understand. Dear friends, there's only one way to be free, and that is to choose every day to follow Jesus. To submit ourselves to Jesus in our mind, to fight that fight out on our knees and then to decide to follow Jesus, to obey Him. If you have not in your heart of hearts committed to follow Jesus Christ, then you will falter. You will fail, dear friend. We have to check ourselves all the time and every moment of the day, we have to be focused on Jesus. Satan is trying to trick all of us into sin, into stumbling, into lying, into lusting, into anything that can draw us away from Jesus. Because if he draws us away from Jesus, if we take our eyes off Jesus, then we falter. We fail, we stumble. As long as we are focused on Jesus, we overcome. Now you will ask me, how do we do that? How do we have the right things to say, to reply? You know, somebody might, might be harsh with you, unreasonable to you, and, and say something to you that hurts you. How do we reply to that person? The best thing is right there to say, Lord, how do you want me to 
react to this. Consult with Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I belong to you. What must I do, Father? How must I, how must I reply to this? How must, how must, what must I do? So many times, you, we need to do nothing. So many times, we just need to walk away. We don't always need to have a quick reply. But you know, the wonderful thing is that if we ask Jesus, He gives us wisdom. And He often gives us words that absolutely shut the devil up. Dear friends, and those words come from Jesus, not from us. It is not by our own knowledge or our own wit that we will overcome. It is not by our own power. It is by our dependence on Jesus Christ. When I submit myself to Jesus and I realize that what he said is true. He said, without me, you can do nothing. You know that? Without Jesus, I will fail. Without Jesus, I will not make it. But with Jesus, I will overcome. But I have to walk with Him. I have to stay focused on Him. I have to be tuned in. Say, Lord, help me, please. You know, it is, it is so wonderful how Jesus helps us if we just ask Him. Our authority over the evil one comes from our relationship with Jesus Christ. God is my Father. You know that. I am my Father's Son. Jesus Christ is my Master. And nothing can touch me that He does not allow. But that does not mean that He will not allow me to be exposed to wrongdoing. It doesn't mean that you will not allow me to be tested and tried. It means that I will be tried, I will be tested, I will be attacked because I'm a child of God. Because I'm a child of God, Satan will come at me all the time. People will hate me. The unbelievers will hate me. The hypocrites will hate me. And what must I do? I must love them. I must do what Jesus wants me to do. And what does Jesus want me to do? He wants me to trust in Him. To learn from Him. To be led by the Holy Spirit. To say, Lord, give me the words. Give me the answer. What must I do, Father? I'm in your hands, Lord. I'm here to be a witness for Jesus. Dear friends, in our own power, we cannot make it. We just cannot make it. You know, it is so wonderful that even in the smallest things, Jesus is with us. We must just ask Him. Jesus said that those who are pure in heart, they will see God. We might get stuck in the traffic and and we get annoyed because we might be late for an appointment. But God has a plan, friends. He directs our footsteps. The other day I was to meet somebody at a certain time. It's 7 o'clock in the morning. And this person that I was to meet turned up a bit late. But he called me and he was very annoyed. He said to me, please go speak to the customer and and just tell him I'll be late. And I did that. But you know, I was sitting there in the car waiting and I said, Lord, I want to talk to this man about thee. I want to I want to testify. I need an opportunity. And you know, when this person called me and said, Please go and speak to the customer and tell him that I'm going to be late. I knocked on the door and I started talking to this person. And I said to him, you know, friend, we all have a story. I want to tell you my story. My story almost ended very badly because 
I had a heart attack and I died. And I found myself on my way to hell. But Jesus Christ gave me another chance. He allowed me to come back. To come and witness. To tell the world that Jesus is alive. And hell is real. And that's why I'm here this morning. Is to tell you Jesus is alive. You know if my partners. If the other person was not liked. If he was not caught up in the traffic. I might not have had that opportunity to speak to that person. But God has a plan with everything. And if we focus on Jesus, then we will see His plan. He will destroy our plans quite often so that we can fit into His plan. So when things go wrong, don't start cussing. Don't get annoyed. Just praise Jesus. And you know, if we keep our eyes on Jesus and we realize that He is in control and we praise Him and everything, then we see His hand. And we are used by Him to be witnesses for Him. Friends, this world does not see Jesus Christ. They cannot. But they will see Jesus in us. If Jesus is in us, if we speak the words of Jesus, if we are focused in Jesus, on Jesus and we listen to him, if we respond, if we, we are tuned into him, then he will put his words in our mouth. He will use us and the world will see Jesus Christ in us. It is all about our relationship with Jesus. Our warfare, our struggle, is with our own unwillingness, dear friends. Our unwillingness to obey God. It is easy to be a witness for Jesus for one day. It is easy to witness for Jesus once in a while. But it's a tough job to do that every day. But that is what He requires of us. We have to stick at it. We have to endure with Jesus. We have to remind ourselves each and every moment. And that is our war. Our war is against ourselves. It is a war that is taking place in us, between our flesh and the Spirit of God. How many times did you not want to testify to somebody and, and then your silly mind tells you, but this person will not listen. Oh, these people are not interested. Don't listen to your mind. Listen to God. Listen to Jesus. Dear friends, we have to be focused, stay focused on Jesus all the time. And like Paul said, mortify the deeds of the flesh. Ignore your own thoughts. Ignore your own inhibitions because the devil will tell you, man, you, you, cannot, you cannot witness for Jesus. Uh, you, you, you're not worthy. You're not good enough. The devil tells many people that uh, they, have, they have gone too far. They've strayed too far from Jesus. They can't go back. He won't take them back. That's the lies of Satan. And people believe that. And they are destroyed by the devil. Satan is a liar. He is the father of all lies. And as long as we keep on listening to him, he will destroy us. But we have to set our mind on Jesus. And do our utmost to, to be pleasing to him. Pray always in our minds. Say, Lord, give me an opportunity. Lord, show me the way. Lord, give me insight. Give me understanding. Give me an opportunity to witness for Thee, to bear fruit for Thy kingdom. If we, if we ask Jesus, He will give it to us, will He not? I say, Father, I want to serve You. Lord, I want to work for Your kingdom. Just show me, please, how. 
And if I'm serious in my heart, there's nothing that pleases the Father heart more than that. But I must be willing. My first enemy is myself. I've got to overcome myself. You know, most people don't want to service. Most people don't want to serve Jesus. They don't want to stop sinning. They don't want to do what is right. And they are looking for excuses not to do it. They will never do it. They will never enter into heaven. They will never witness for Jesus. They will never be fruitful for the kingdom of God. They will tell you, oh, you are talking about a works salvation. Dear friends, I work for the kingdom of God because I'm a fellow heir. You know that? It's my father's house. I'm building on to my father's house. And I want to expand his kingdom because I will inherit his kingdom if I endure with him until the end. But if I'm unworthy, if I'm lazy, he will cast me out. He said every branch that in him that does not bear fruit, he will cut it off. The tree that does not bear fruit, he will pull it out. He will plant another one there. We are called to bear fruit, dear friends. We are called to be witnesses for Jesus, to work for the kingdom of God, to serve and obey our Father, to be righteous and holy, to be light in darkness, to walk in the light and to be light, to bring others to Jesus, to be the body of Christ so that the world will see Jesus Christ in us. That is the Jesus that they see. Dear friends, that is our struggle. Our struggle is against our own willingness. Because in us we have it to do evil or to do good. If we do bad, we will perish. If we live according to the flesh, we must die. Paul is not talking to to unbelievers. He's not talking to those who are not born again. He's talking to born again children of God. He says, if we live according to the flesh, we must die. But if by the Spirit of God, we mortify the deeds of the flesh and we do the will of God, we will live. Those who are being led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Go and read Romans chapter 8. But he also says that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ do not belong to Him. If we invite Jesus into our heart and we listen to Him, He will speak to us. He will guide us every day, every moment of the day. We will experience Him. But if we ignore Him, then He will also in the end say, Go away from me, I never knew you. Dear friends, it is our choice to follow Jesus Christ. It must be our desire to serve Him. If we don't want to serve Him, it's our choice, but then we will have no place with Him. We have to fight against evil. We have to fight against the desires of the flesh. We have to fight against our own opinion and our own ideas and submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit of God. Say, Jesus, Lord, teach me. Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, tell me what to do. Father, that man cussed me. What must I do? That man smacked me. What must I do? Dear friends, the Holy Spirit is with us to guide us, each and every one of us, if we just, if we just listen, if we just ask, I see somebody is asking here. Can Jesus forgive blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Dear friend, talk to Jesus. You know, so many people ask me questions about Jesus. What will Jesus say? What will Jesus do? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not Jesus. I cannot speak for him. But I can tell you one thing: go to Jesus. Go speak to. Say, Lord, help me please. 
O oh, charming prince, he will never reject anyone who comes to him with a serious heart. Don't listen to Satan. He's going to tell you, you have, uh, you have gone too far. You have blasphemed the Holy Spirit. You have done this and you've done that and God will not forgive you. Listen to Jesus. Go to Jesus. Don't listen to s Satan. Don't listen to other people apart from those who tell you to go to Jesus. That's what it is about. It's about Jesus Christ. Go to Jesus. Follow Him. Ask Him. Don't ask people. Our relationship is with Jesus, friends. And my job is to take you to Jesus. To put your hand in the hand of Jesus and then you follow Him. I'm just a fellow follower of Jesus Christ. I'm just a fellow pilgrim, pilgrim, a servant of Christ. We're just here to glorify the King, to do His will and to endure with Him until the end, to fight the good fight against the evil that wants to overcome us and to do good, to obey Jesus and stay with Him until the very end. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Dear friends, let us let us pray together. And then after that, we can uh, chat somewhat and I will reply to some questions. Heavenly Father, we thank Thee, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity that we have. We thank Thee, Father, that we can just come together like this, that we can fellowship, encourage each other, to know Thee, to seek Thee, to follow Thee, Lord Jesus, because there is no other way other than to seek Thee with all our heart. Lord, we just praise and honor Thee for Thy goodness and mercy. Almighty oh, God, we bring Thee all the glory, all the honor, and all the praises. Be glorified in us and through us, Lord, and by us. Please use us for Thy kingdom, Father, too. Bring many souls unto thee, many souls unto righteousness. O oh, Father, please give us mercy and strength, Lord, to endure with thee until the end. Do not give up, to, to endure and to run the, the good race until the very end. We thank thee and we praise thee, Father, in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Dear friends, I have put my glasses on so that I can read the uh, uh, your comments here in the side and maybe reply to the one or two. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. When you find an answer in the Bible, your faith grows a little more. What a blessing. That's true, my cunt. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, poor, poor lame college student, you know, we must be light and darkness. That is what Jesus called us to be, all of us. It is not for the other person, it is for me. Uh, I must, I must be a shining light in darkness. You know, there's an old uh, old gospel song that says, It's me, O Lord. It's not my brother, it's not my sister, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. We can uh, so easily look to other people, but we must mind our own relationship with Jesus and, and make sure that we are pleasing to Him. We are the ones in need of, of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, Sister Maria, um, Maria Marsha, you know, uh, if we put Jesus in our mind all day, He puts His joy and His peace in us. And we've got to decide that, to praise the Lord. You know, the Lord uh, lives amongst the praises of His children. So the more we praise Jesus, the more His, uh, His joy flows through us. The more you pray in tongues, the more... Uh, the joy of Jesus flows through you also. You know all about that, sister. You've got a, a wonderful testimony of how Jesus baptized you in the Holy Spirit, filled you with the Spirit, and uh, streams of living water. 
Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Thank you, sister, for all your work with the translation into Spanish. Hallelujah. His basket balls in. <laughs> you know, anything that is more important than Jesus is sin. If if I choose anything before Jesus, then it becomes a sin in me. But Jesus must be first in everything. Is playing sin considered uh, being a friend of the world? Is playing sports? Well. I, I think that answer that, that thing that the answer to that question is in our heart we must say Lord Jesus is it is it pleasing to thee that I go kick the ball and that I get annoyed with with uh, other team members and that uh, that I maybe become proud when when I play better better ball than other people does it glorify Jesus no it doesn't Hallelujah. Okay, a question about the, what the Gnostics believed. You know, the thing is, I know Jesus Christ, and that is all that matters to me, dear friend. You know, what the Gnostics believe is really, you know, it's not interesting to me. There are many things that we don't know. But, you know, Paul said, uh, we, we look like, you know, it's, it's like we're looking into a mirror and we see a dim picture. But one day we will, we will know, like we, we have been known uh, in full. And, you know, there are many questions that we have that are really not important. But one day Jesus will give us understanding. So I don't really concern myself about you know the theories and, and and stories of people. Hallelujah. How to continue to speak in tongues? Well, just go pray again and speak in tongues. That's all. Nothing stops you. Nothing stops you. Jesus worked on Sabbath. We're not Jews, friends. We're not Jews. Jews are not Christians. You know that? Did you know Jews are not Christians? Jesus did not call us to be Jews. He did not call us to to uh, to keep the law of, of Moses. He, he did not change us into Jews. If you come to Jesus, you're born again. You become a child of God being led by the Spirit of God. You don't keep the Sabbath. You follow Jesus every day. That's what you do. You become a son of God. You don't become a Jew. The Jews are not children of God. We we have to obey the words of Jesus and do His will. Be righteous. Be holy. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Yes, Richard Morgan, that is that is the big thing, is for us to decide to endure until the end, you know. It's like a person who starts to run a marathon. If I enroll for a marathon and I'm going to run, I've got to be determined. I know I can say to my mother or to my wife or somebody, say, pray for me that I will finish this race, that I will run until the end, you know, even if, if my legs ache and even if, if I get tired. Uh, you know, I have got to be determined to, to endure until the end. If I give up, then I've given up. And so, dear friend, we've got, to, uh, we've got to endure until the end. Jesus said, he who puts his hand to the plow and looks back, he who starts something and looks back, is not, is not worthy of him. You know, all these people that so easily quit, you know, they go to college, they quit. They get married, they quit. You know, uh, they they want to follow Jesus. They quit. What makes them think that they will enter in, into heaven? They won't. You know, Jesus. They said to Jesus, uh, "Lord, are those who are being saved few?" He said, "Strive hard to find the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try hard and not be able." 
So it's up to you and me to, to strive hard, to endure, to follow Jesus Christ every day. How can one pray to stop evil thoughts? Well, you know, Sharky, evil thoughts uh, come to us all the time if we, if we allow it. I don't think about evil things. If an th evil thought comes my way, I say, get behind me, Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. When that girl walks past you and you look the way that you shouldn't look at her, then you say, get behind me, Satan. You rebuke him. Put your mind on Jesus because those things that you allow to enter your mind, they will make you get into sin. And it's because you allowed it. We allow ourselves to, to do the wrong things. A lot of people say they cannot wa stop watching porn. They lie. Why do you why do you turn on the computer and, and go and watch those sites? Why do you uh, take your, your, your iPhone or your cell phone and go and watch porn? You did it. You did it. You say you're addicted? No, no, no. no. I don't believe that. Hallelujah, yes. Oh, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, dear friends, we've been on here for, I guess, 45 minutes. And uh, I hope that How to tell brothers and sisters around me that speaking in tongues is necessary when they think it's just for somebody. Uh, Joe, you know, I speak in tongues, but I speak in tongues when I'm alone with Jesus. When I drive my car away, uh, it's not for public display. You know, it is, it's about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Many people who speak in tongues will burn in hell too, because they do not obey Jesus. Uh, God gives his gifts to all people, but, uh, you, you know, uh, it is for us to obey Jesus. Uh, people who live in sin also, sometimes they speak in tongues as well, but uh, speaking in tongues is no guarantee of salvation. We have to bear fruit of righteousness, holiness, obedience to Jesus We uh, to, to have salvation. Speaking in tongues will not bring you into heaven. Yes, it's a wonderful thing to pray in tongues. But uh, what we must do is obey Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's very really true. Uh, if, you, if you say Jesus, people, people get offended because He is God. He is God. All the others are... Or, or Satan, they, 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 they don't exist, they're just demons. He's the only true God. Jesus Christ is the only true God. And that is why people get annoyed when, when you say Jesus. Do homosexuals have a, a demon inside of them? No, yeah, they could have, they could have. You know, a friend, to, to do evil, sodomy, and to steal, to to do wrong, to sin, to uh, uh, whatever sin there is that you do, is a decision that you make. You decide to do that. Uh, if, if you decide to, to sin, then uh, that is your desire, and you do your desire. Now what does happen is that God gives people over to their desires. If you, if you really want to uh, be a homosexual or uh, immoral people and God will allow immoral and, and, and homosexual demons to enter you and and uh, they will uh, a lust will uh, it, it will uh, eat you up it will uh, destroy you it will burn you up because you know if if we really want to do evil things God will not stop us uh, he, he will, he will, in the end, he will, he will enable us, because that is our desire. Well, Thanksgiving is a good thing if we want to say thank you to Jesus. If we, but dear friend, you know the thing is, 
uh, Christmas is, is, is uh, all of these uh, feast days are of pagan origin and uh, many of them, many of the so-called Christian days were uh, you know, the, the, the pagan practices were incorporated into them and, and even people who celebrate Christmas and, and you know, and, and they celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus um, to me, most of them it is, it is not about Jesus, it is about Christmas parties and eating and drinking and being merry and and, uh, and buying gifts and all that, it does not glorify God, it is unfruitful um, we have to be fruitful for the kingdom of God, get our mind on Jesus it's also no good to to just just go around cursing everybody you know about you know, say you uh, you know you you are of Satan because you do this and that and all the other some people you know some of these things people do out of ignorance or have been brought up like that until they they realize that um, it does not glorify God I really want them what is that uh, speaking to a celibate I did not uh, get that. Hallelujah. Dear friends, you know, the thing about sin is nobody will have any excuse. Nobody. Because, you know, as Paul writes in, in, in uh, Romans chapter 1 and 2, he says, what can be known of God is is known to all people because God has revealed it. You know, God has written His laws in our heart. We all know right from wrong, uh, but people to choose to do wrong. People choose to ignore God. If we seek the truth, if we, if we go on our knees and we pray and we say, Lord Jesus, please show me the truth, He will show us the truth, but people don't want the truth. They love darkness, they love lies. And that is why God gives them over to their desires. And, uh, and they, they get into more and more filth. But if we want to turn around, then Jesus will set us free. If we come to Jesus, then He will accept us. He will make us free. It is not the will of God that men perish. But if we have no desire for Jesus, we have no desire for his kingdom. We have no desire for uh, to follow him. Then he will not force us. He will allow us to go and be what we want to be. But in the end, we will not have any place with him. Good evening, Miguel Silva from Brazil. Where do the evil thoughts come from? Our flesh. Our flesh is evil. Our flesh is evil, man. And if we allow, uh, if we open the door to evil and to the devil, then he comes in. We must keep the devil out and invite Jesus in. Now, many people are demon-possessed. Many Christians or believers are demon-possessed. They, uh, they have opened the door to Satan and they do it every day. They watch TV every day. They watch porn every day. They walk around with evil thoughts, lustful thoughts in their minds all day. Uh, they embrace Satan. Uh, so they are, they are, you know, they, they do evil like drinking water. That's a choice. You know, uh, we read in, in, the, in the book of, of uh, Revelation that those who are, are clean, pure, be pure still. And that those who, who are holy, be holy still. You know? Uh, those who want to be true, uh, want to be holy, they will be holy. They will uh, separate themselves unto God. And those who are filthy will become even more filthy. But the choice is ours. Hallelujah. Sister, Sister Maria, when I wait on Jesus, when you wait, a very good question, when you wait on Jesus, do you stay in silence to be able to listen to him or just keep praying all the time? You know, we have this thing that when we pray, 
we 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 immediately want a reply. Uh, we expect that we can go to Jesus and say, Lord, uh, I want to know what to do in this and that situation, and then we we expect to hear from Jesus immediately. Now, let me tell you, sometimes I go and pray about something, and immediately Jesus gives me the answer. I know what to do. He gives me the solution immediately. Other times, not. You know. Um, I've asked the Lord about um, about things, and then He speaks to me two or three days later. Uh, and uh, that is how God works. You know, we must live in the expectation uh, and in faith, and and wait on the Lord. Say, Lord, please show me what to do. But He will speak to us in His time. He will give us understanding. It's good to spend some time in prayer. Wait on the Lord and just be there with Jesus. Not going to get something, but just going to be there. Going there to to be with Jesus. That is what it is about. Yeah, we can meditate on Jesus. We must always do that. You know, the Lord speaks in His way and in His time. Somebody wrote me today and say, how long did I wait for certain things, you know? <laughs> God is God. God is God. I'm here to serve Him. I'm servant. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> he speaks to me what and when He wishes. And I submit to Him. I trust Him. Because He will, he will say to me what He wants me to hear in His time. I'm just His servant. You know, he doesn't owe me an answer. But he loves me. You know, I, I just... You know, the wonderful thing is that sometimes Jesus answers my desire or my prayer even before I ask. I'm thinking about something. And then the next thing the Lord has supplied or he has, he has given me the answer. And that is so wonderful. Well, Boris... You know, those who are pure in heart will see God. We must check our motives. Uh, you say, how do you know it's God that gave you the answer, not your own mind? What is my motive? Do, is it selfish? Uh, or do, do I want to serve God? Do I want to serve the kingdom of God? When I've made that out, then the answer is easy because those who are pure in heart, they will see God. They will receive an answer from God. But if we are wicked in our hearts, God will answer us according to our wickedness. You know, uh, a lot of times He will give us the answer that we want, even if it's wrong. If we come to the Lord with a crooked heart, He gives us a crooked answer. I know that too. So we've got to be serious with Jesus. Don't play games. Yeah, so many who do do. I don't know who you are, but you know, so many uh, of of the viewers of years ago have changed their, their names. So I don't know who they are, but anyway, it doesn't matter as long as we follow Jesus. Sharky, you know what? Um, we just have to follow Jesus, my friend. Uh, this world does not belong to Jesus. This world is... Only those who follow Jesus belong to Him and they, they obey Him. Uh, they do what He tells them to do. Amen, Brother Mark. That's so true. That's so true. Ethan, you have the best friend that there is in the whole world, and that's Jesus Christ. You don't need any more. I'll tell you one thing. If you seriously follow Jesus, you will not have many friends. Uh, I can tell you I don't have many close friends. But I take them to Jesus and I leave them with Him. 
Those who want to follow him, that's good. They follow him, that's what it is about. I'm not here to make friends and influence people. I'm here to take people to Jesus. I don't care to have friends. I care to take everybody to Jesus Christ. That's what life is about. Hallelujah. Yes, Valerie, I know, I know that you. <laughs> I think you're speaking to somebody else. Kaiko fam, do you go freely and talk to people and spreading the word or wait for Jesus to tell you where exactly to go and what you say? Dear friend, you know, if you, if you are excited about something or somebody, then uh, you cannot help but talk about him, you know. So if you are excited about Jesus and you don't ask for permission, you talk about him and people try and shut you up. So, you know, that is the way it goes. If you love Jesus, you talk about Jesus. If you love other things, if you love soccer or ball game, then that's all you can talk about. So uh, what I say is let's talk about Jesus. That's why I'm here talking about Jesus and not about other things. Uh, well, you know, poor lame student, Jesus reigns. He reigns right now. I'm part of his kingdom. I serve him. I am his subject. He's reigning right here. And people don't see it. They don't see him. But those who know Jesus, they see him. They're part of his kingdom. They work for him. We must just ask him to open our eyes, become part of his kingdom, and then we will reign with him. We won't be the, uh, the, the ones who reign. He is the one who reigns. We all serve him. Hallelujah. Well, Richard Morgan, uh, Mongan, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, I, I wanted for many years to, to pray in tongues, for the gift of speaking in tongues. And, 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 and so many of my, you know, of my uh, 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 brothers in the Lord were speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. And, and I just felt that I was like a second-hand Christian, you know. I felt that I was not good enough. And I became very, uh, you know, very sad about that. But, you know, it was a good thing that the Lord made me wait. Because uh, when the Lord gave me the gift and I started praying in tongues, He baptized me in the Holy Spirit, then I realized that, you know, it is, um, it is not about how good you are. It is about your desire to pray, your desire for Jesus. You know, if you spend time with Jesus, say, Lord, I just want more of you. Lord, fill me with your spirit. Lord, give me that living water. I just want Jesus. He will fill you. Uh, he will give you everything. You know, uh, he, he, he freely gives his spirit to those who seek him. Just say, Lord, I want you. But people don't want Jesus. They don't go and pray. They don't go spend time with him. They don't have their mind on him. They're more busy with the television and, and playing their video games and playing, you know, everybody's playing with these, these little cell phone things nowadays. They spend hours with those, but they can't pray. They don't talk to Jesus. You know, uh, Jesus talks me, to me any time, eh? Because I'm tuned in. He, he talks to me at night. I pray tonight, and, and during the night He speaks to me, and He gives me a, a dream. He gives me a revelation. Uh, we got to be tuned in to Jesus. If we need, if we want more of the Spirit of God, we, we, we ask. He says, if we hunger and if we thirst, then He will satisfy us. But if we're not thirsty, if we just want, uh, you know, just want a blessing, uh, Jesus is not in the blessing game. He is, he is in, the, uh, in the abidance game. He comes and lives in you. He's not a visitor. You know, people just want to, Jesus to visit. No, He's not a visitor. He wants to come and stay with us. You know, and He wants us to to love Him and be with Him all the time. So if we don't have that desire to be with Jesus, to be in fellowship with Him all the time, then we have a problem. You know, a lot of people are so worried about fellowship with other Christians. 
man, I, I, I want fellowship with Jesus. That's what matters. It's not that I don't care for other people, but uh, it, it is about that fellowship with Jesus. Nothing makes me more happy than when Jesus speaks to me. That's what matters. Hallelujah. What you must do to get a relationship with Jesus. Seek Him with all your heart, my friend. Obey His words. Uh, turn away from sin. And, and go on your knees. Cry out to Jesus. Say, Lord, come into my heart. Lord, I need you. And if you pray, that's how we get to know Jesus. Through prayer. Obey His words. Go and read the Gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Uh, turn away from sin. Be holy. Repent of sin. And then be baptized in water. Keep on praying. Ask Jesus to, to come and live in you. Uh, if we draw closer to Him, He draws closer to us. Then we will know Him for real. Uh, Miguel Silva, to pray in tongues is not logical, it's faith. You just speak in faith what the Lord puts in your mouth. You don't worry what you say. You just speak to God, that's it. I don't worry what I say when I pray in tongues. I just, I'm just speaking to the Lord. Nobody understands. God understands and that's all that I care. Uh, God knows. He knows what I want to say even before I say. He knows my heart. So whatever I speak in tongues is just an utterance to Him. It just flows from me. What it is, I don't know. But the Spirit of God in me gives me the, the utterance and I'm speaking to God. Hallelujah. Trent Appleman, you know what, I I was uh, online fellowship, look our fellowship with must be with Jesus, uh, neglect not the fellowship, you know there's one verse that, uh, that somebody wrote and that uh, churches are using to get you into, into church, but uh, they will never say to you, oh, don't neglect your fellowship with Jesus, they just say come to church and bring your money. Now that is what they are about, is the money. Now what I say to you is, do not neglect your fellowship with Jesus. Uh, you know, I don't want to have online fellowships and people come to the fellowship because, you know, that's a nice thing to do. I want them to have fellowship with Jesus. To hear my voice and see my face is not important. I'm just, <laughs> you know, I'm just a fellow servant. But yeah, I'm here to point you to Jesus, to encourage you. Say, go spend time with Jesus. Go and pray. Go ask Him. Go listen. Go pray for the sick. Uh, go lay your hands on the sick and, and Jesus will heal them. Go and witness for Jesus. Take Jesus seriously. Hallelujah. I'm just reading the uh, the comments here. Yeah, you know, churches. This is a, I'm, I'm responding to poor lame college student. Uh, you know, churches is a nice place to place to go for for college students to go and meet up with girls and all that, and people who use it uh, as a social place to get business contacts and all that. But that is not what Jesus called us to. He calls us into relationship with Himself. So uh, we've got to make sure that our relationship is with Jesus Christ and that that is real. Well, dear friends, we've been on here for more than an hour now, and uh, I'm uh, thankful that we can have this. Uh, we could have this time together, and um, Lord willing, we will we will do so again in future. And 
and uh, have fellowship and share with each other and and I'm glad to share what what I've uh, I'm receiving from the Lord Jesus to encourage others so that they will truly follow him hallelujah Jesus is the answer there is no other you know there's an old song that says take your burdens to Jesus he cares for you that's it he is the only one who cares and understands just go to Jesus just go to Jesus he's all we need wonderful wonderful dear friends let us uh, let us just pray together before we before we adjourn here Heavenly Father, we thank Thee, Lord, for this time that we could have together. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that we may bring many souls to Thee. Lord, please let us grow in understanding of Thee and in our relationship with Thee. Father, we seek Thee. Lord, in these times, in this world that is so wicked and so lost, Father, we pray, O Lord, that we might bring light in darkness. Lord Jesus, let us be vessels of honor to bring people to the light. We want to endure with thee until the end, Father. Lord, I pray for each and every one who attended this, uh, this fellowship and, and also for those who might watch it afterwards. Lord, I pray thy blessing and mercy on all of us, Father. May we be encouraged to seek Thee, to follow Thee, Lord, and to grow in our relationship with Thee. There's only one way, and that is to follow Thee. Lord, to fight the good fight and to endure until the very end and to enter into Thy rest. We thank Thee and honor Thee and praise Thee, Father. We thank Thee in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Dear friend, uh, I could uh, I could sing. I'll tell you one thing. Um, uh, I would rather not do it. The people around us here will not appreciate it. So, uh, but I will I will certainly, Lord willing, make some more. Uh, you know, maybe sing on a video or something. But uh, I don't want to disturb the neighbors. Let me put it that way. Hallelujah. May Jesus bless you, dear friends. Good night.